the tram is the superior form of mass transit. It existed before all others and it will exist long after them. When humanity first founded modern cities that necessitated taking workers from cheap housing to unsafe factories, they built trams. And it might be that recently fads called cars and buses have taken over the streets. But despite this, I am confident that long after all oil is burned and individual car ownership has fallen by the wayside, the tram will reign supreme. In a well-designed city such as Vienna, trams arrive at stations every 3 to 10 minutes, depending on demand, and stations are 5 minute walks apart. Trams have their own lanes, which allows them to overtake stinky car owners. They're safer than cars because they're small trains and they win in every collision. Tram lanes also allow for emergency vehicles, some of the only acceptable forms of individual cars, to bypass all those idiots standing at the stoplight. Tram tickets cost 1 euro 60 cents per transit. Unless you get a monthly ticket for 50 euro uh, or a yearly pass for 365. If you buy the yearly ticket for 10 years in a row, you could almost afford the cheapest used car on the market. Not the fuel or the maintenance, but you could own a car. In a city like Vienna, which has over a thousand tram stops, cars do not make economic sense. Not for consumers to buy and not for the city to support. It's also way better ergonomically. See, one tram can fit 200 people in a 50 meter long wheelchair friendly vehicle while transporting 200 people in individual cars would be liable to causing a small traffic jam. Yes, it's true that the trams of Vienna only average 15 kilometers per hour at peak times, while cars can manage a whopping 22 kilometers per hour. But consider, on the tram, you can do whatever you like. You can do some knitting, you can write a novel, you can read a book, you can watch a Wiki 1999 video about how great trams are, or you could eat a good old Austrian Leverkassemme. While you drive a car, you can't even be on the phone or drunk. And being drunk is the main reason why people like trams. Not to mention how cars keep killing people on a daily basis. Well, the last time a tram was involved in a deadly accident was four months ago. And it was because the 70 year old guy was walking on the tracks without checking if there's a tram coming. Well, obviously my heart goes out to the family of the victim, but you know, trams are still way safer, cheaper, more ergonomic and environmentally friendly than cars could ever be. So now that the rant is over, I can say hello and welcome to the new video. Uh, today we're talking about the thing I just talked about. Trams, streetcars, light rail, trolleys, these tracked vehicles that go along public roads, which they usually share with cars and pedestrians, which combine the convenience of bus transportation with the environmental impact of walking. As you can tell, I think they're great. I made my preposterous argument in the open of this video and now we can get to the dry and boring part where I support my arguments with history, facts and observable data about the issue. This is not a joke. Uh, the video will be a lot less exciting from now on. Uh, the title and intro were a trick to ploy you into learning about trams. I was first exposed to the tram system when I moved to Vienna about six months ago. Fun fact, in Vienna we call the tram BIM. Because unlike cars which go honk, the beam goes beep. So what's up with trams? Well, like literally everything I ever talk about on this YouTube channel, it starts with early 18th century capitalism. You see, when the new fancy machines made farms more efficient, all the farm slave, I mean, I mean peasants, had to find a new master to serve. They found those masters in their cities. The masters were called capitalists and didn't even actually own the workers anymore. They just owned the only means for the workers to survive, so they could force them to work. A system which is still in use today. This influx of workers brought problems with it. These people needed not only places to work, which capitalists happily provided, and places to sleep, which landlords happily provided, but also ways to get from those living spaces to the workplaces. 
coaches existed, but not for the poor people. And when the people checked the calendar, they learned it would be nearly 130 years before the average Austrian would get to own a car. So what to do? Well, subways were a new and very expensive technology. And there was no space for trains with their huge stations and need for bridges and so on. So Kaiser Franz of House Habsburg decided to do the thing which every city in the world was doing. Combine the idea of trains on tracks with the idea of horse carts on roads. So you would get trains on tracks drawn by horses on roads. They would put small, barely noticeable tracks in the roads of Vienna. Coaches, horses and people on penny farthing bicycles could still use the road like before. But those tracks allowed a pair of horses to pull tram cars full of people. You could get 20 or 30 people pulled by two horses using those tracks. This was all made possible by modern steel fabrication methods and the invention of the ball bearing. These trams were quickly put all over the city to transport the unwashed poor proletarians to their place of employment where they could frolic near dangerous machinery for 18 hours a day without OSHA or a right to unionize. Vienna is not the only place to do it this way. Uh, trams were cheaper to build and maintain than subways and far simpler and cheaper and safer than steam trains of the day. Every city was plastered in tram tracks. London, Berlin, Paris, New York, Los Angeles, Sydney, Melbourne, Istanbul, Moscow. Every large city was building trams for short and medium distance transportation because it was the cheapest and best option out there. As time advanced, electrification came into play and horses were replaced by electric engines. And unlike horses, which make manure and need hay, electric trams are super clean provided the power plant, which generates the electricity, is clean. Um, but surely, surely, knowing all that, nothing would stand in the way of trams dominating cities forever. So what happened? Where did the trams go? Why aren't trams the premier form of transportation in cities anymore? Well, two isms. Uh, capitalism and fascism. But since fascism is a form of capitalism, let's just blame capitalism. After the World War, much of Europe was destroyed and had to be rebuilt. This was very expensive for everyone. And the government, which just spent trillions on tanks and planes, were in a mood to save money. And as any financial advisor will tell you, the way to save money is to cut your costs. Put a pin in that. Because of the advance of modern manufacturing, a guy called Ford invented the assembly line. I say invented because, of course, the concept had been described by Adam Smith in his book The Wealth of Nations nearly a century earlier. Either way, he started making cars. His stated goal was to replace horses, which I agree with. I do not like horses. At the start, cars were a luxury, but in the post-war economic boom, they became just cheap enough that you could make a long car that fits many people Call it a bus and transport people. Incidentally, the bus happened to be cheaper than the tram. So returning to the pin we put there, when cities and countries tried to save money in the 50s and 60s, they decided to do it by replacing trams with buses. It makes sense on paper. Uh, buses can overtake things and they don't need their tracks to be upkept. So, over time, cities bought buses and removed tram tracks on the road. To save money, they decided to remove the very expensive to install tracks permanently. Then in the 60s and 70s, suddenly everyone started buying cars. So they didn't even need the bus anymore. So when ridership dwindled, buses were given up. Now we live in a world in which you either own a car or you're fucked. Buses are underfunded. Trains don't go short distances and subways are too expensive for most cities to even bother constructing. In addition to that, city planners in the West decided to focus on the suburb model, which means shops and businesses are in cities and people live far outside of the cities. These suburbs were designed without trams, subways, trains, bikes or walking in mind. The planners just expect you to own a car. But it's not like cars are too expensive for many people. Okay, assuming that's not an issue. 
CO2. Cars are destroying the planet. Individual car ownership and its associated industries are one of the largest factors in climate change. Buses are bad too, but not as bad. But guess what form of transport can easily be adapted to be entirely climate neutral? It's the trams. Just put nuclear power in the tram lines and you're good. Transportation sector made climate neutral. But assuming you do not care for the climate, there are still other issues with cars. For example, there is a limited amount of oil out there. Yes, we can find more and yes, we can somewhat supplement part of the need by making biofuel. But the cold hard economic truth is that it's a non-renewable resource that we will have less and less of over time. Every second we use oil that we cannot replace. We won't just suddenly run out one day. Uh, prices will keep increasing as supply decreases. And at some point, the average person will not be able to afford a car anymore. And at that point, buses will be way more expensive to operate than trams because of fuel costs. This point is not here yet. But in the next few decades, oil will be phased out, either by environmentalists like me or by the invisible hand of daddy free market. She keeps touching me inappropriately. Maybe you foolishly believe that electric cars will come to the rescue, um, and to some extent they might, but just like oil, uh, lithium, which the batteries are made out of, is a limited resource. And there is not enough lithium on the planet to give everyone a car. Not even everyone, just everyone who already has one. So even by that measure, cars will be very rare. Yes, some people will always have cars. Moving people need trucks. Supermarkets need trucks. Farmers need tractors. Ambulances are important. And people in rural areas will probably still need carpools. There will never be a future entirely without cars. But I think that in the future, the average person will have to rely on public transport for their day-to-day -day transportation to and from work. And yes, this also means redesigning cities to have more frequent public transport and destroying the suburbs. My choice was by nuke, but apparently it's a crime in Germany with a 10,000 euro fine. But you may come up with some counter to my argument. Maybe they will find ways to make infinite carbon neutral fuel for cars. Or maybe we will conquer the solar system and get our lithium from there which I think are arguments so unrealistic and removed from the near term reality which we have to deal with, that they may as well be bad faith and I could ignore them. But I'm in a good mood, so assuming you're right, cars are still bad. <laughs> cars kill people all the time. Cars are the biggest non-disease killers in the world. They also cause toxic gases, and I'm not even talking about CO2, I'm talking about the tires. See, the rubber gets ground down and becomes microplastics, which people who live near places where cars are, breathe in. Not to mention the pollutants caused by the manufacture and disassembly of cars. And no, electric cars are not better. They're even worse in the toxic chemicals they use. Vienna is a great lesson here. Most of the city was built either before or during the time of the trams, but not the East. That was built in the 60s and 70s when cars were common. So while most of Vienna is dense buildings full of people with trams nearby, uh, the East is mostly parking lots. When I was at the general hospital for the East, I had to walk five minutes between the subway station and the hospital. And the entire distance was just the hospital parking lot. You could have housed dozens of businesses and hundreds of families on the same area instead of making it a space for cars. This is especially bad in the USA, where you have enough space for a small town being occupied by nothing but a stadium parking lot, which it takes 50 minutes to walk across. In Vienna, we didn't start a tram line. The fact that people own cars encourages developers to buy cheap land en masse far away from cities and public transport, because, well, the land is cheaper. And it allows shops to build their malls far outside of cities, on cheap land, with the assumption that people will drive. 
As long as cars exist, we will create cities, states and countries that become harder and harder to connect using public transport once individual car ownership is no longer economically feasible. Cars are on their way out. They have done enough damage. It's time to look at better alternatives. You may have been screaming at your monitor for the past 15 minutes saying subways. Why not make a subway instead of trams? Well, the main reason is of course cost. It takes a lot of time and money to not only dig tunnels everywhere, but to inspect and maintain them way more than it does for trams. Of course, subways have the advantage of not taking up any surface level traffic. But my main issue with subways is distance. The trams of Vienna stopped every 500 meters, which is about a five minute walk. The subways have stops every few kilometers. See, if you want to go to a place in between two subway stations, you better have a bike and no mobility problems. And best you're not carrying groceries either. The way I see it, subways and trams serve a different purpose. One cannot replace the other. The tram takes you from one block to the next and the subway takes you from one city district to the next. It's like the difference between a highway and a local road. One takes you far, the other takes you to the specific destination. Using trams as argument against subways is kind of dumb. Uh, if you want to go to a far away place, it will take ages if you stop at every block. But using subways as a way to argue against trams is also dumb because subways don't provide service to local areas like trams do. For transportation in local area, you need both trams and subways. So what, what about transportation in between those local areas? Exactly, trains. For now, the discussion was focused on short and medium distance transport, as you would find in a place like, I don't know, Vienna, where I live, which turns out people like talking about their lived experience. Crazy, I know. Uh, and while trams work great for me 80% of the time, the other 20% I spent in Lower Austria, where my family lives, and last week so generously gifted me COVID, along with 10 sick days. Just sucks that YouTube doesn't do sick days. Also, sorry about the delayed upload, no reason. If I want to go out of town, I need some alternative to the trams. For a variety of reasons, trams do not lend themselves to rural areas. Maintenance costs and schedules, for example. Luckily, over 200 years ago, humanity invented the train. And since then, we also discovered how to make the train not explode. Trains are safer and often faster than driving. And they're definitely cheaper and more environmentally friendly than flying when traveling between cities. You don't need to focus on the road and you can go to the toilet whenever you damn please. Uh, and turbulence is not a thing on trains. Uh, they're just a superior form of transport for long distance transport uh, for people and goods. The only downside to trains is that uh, we have not yet made them able to cross the ocean. That's why we have ships and airplanes, both of which are horrific for the environment. But you know what? How all of you citizens of the world travel across the ocean is not really my problem. I have only seen the ocean once in my life because I live in a landlocked country. Go have the nautical engineers figure out how to reduce the carbon footprint of the shipping industry. I'm just here because I like trams. So with that, we come to the conclusion. Trams are the best, as proven by history, fuck cars and subways, but trains are fine. Thank you for watching. Did you notice that that is, that is the titles of the sections? Yeah, it, you could have just read the timestamps and you'd have gotten through this video a lot faster. Anyways, I'd say the perfect world is from a space use, climate change and user friendliness and cost standpoint, is the one where you have trams serving short and medium distance transport, trains for medium and long distance, and you only allow motor vehicles for those who have a genuinely good reason, like piano movers or the fire brigade. Thank you for watching. I will now have a nice weekend laughing at the car fetishists in my comment section. Thank you very much to my Patreons who receive access to my Discord server, by the way, and especially thanks to Liam S, Alan V, Eric Betts, Lily Lollet, Nane Zaria, Toosnake, Broccoli Robbery, 
Carissa, Daniel Hyman, Dominic Cusanelli, Emily Margot Klassen, Evie Bremel, Kevin Sanders, Klaustrup, Lazy Panda 234, Luke Stoll, Monica McGrain, Raman Deville, Red Chalk Trooper, Sarah, Stairmaster Chef, The Swiss Fanboy, Theon Gillian Jr., Travis, and Theon Leia Hartley. Yeah, I think I nailed it. I, I hope this take worked. <laughs>